you're still at school, but you want to become a game developer. How do you make that transition from student to game development? <laughs> this is actually a few questions or one of you submitted this question. And I think I'm kind of qualified to talk about this because I'm currently going through the same transition. I too was a student before I was at school and now I'm getting into game development. I'm trying to become a game developer. I actually thought about this quite a bit. So if you plan to do the same or if you think about doing the same, then here might be some useful advice for you. <laughs> so the first piece of advice that came to my mind was think about it if game development is really the correct thing for you It's not as easy as you think. It's also not as fun as you think. It's actually real work Think think if you really want that but honestly screw that that won't get you anywhere Even I don't really know if game development is the correct thing for me The only way to find out is simply to try it You can think through it all day long, but in the end that won't get you anywhere What you need to do is you need to try it out. <laughs> Your 20s are literally the best time to try stuff, to take risks. Sure, being successful with game development is pretty hard and finding a good job in game development is pretty hard, but your 20s are the time to take risks. Later on, when you have a family and do who knows what, then it won't be as comfortable to just say, okay, I'm gonna do game development for three years. What better time is there to try stuff, to just randomly try stuff? See if you like it. And if you don't, not all that much is lost. <laughs> you can still do something else. If you do like it, however, stick with it. The next thing you actually need to figure out is if you want to work in a games company or if you want to make games alone or if you want to start your own company. <laughs> Obviously working in a company that already works is a lot safer. Let's be real, it's still risky. <laughs> and then starting your own company or trying to make games by yourself is of course way, 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 way riskier. <laughs> so huh. Once again, you can obviously try both, maybe do an internship in a games company, maybe try to create some games on your own, see what you like better. For me personally, I like creating games myself a lot better. Firstly, I have very big ambitions. I don't want to work for somebody else for the rest of my entire life. I need some creative freedom. I need to feel a sense of ownership over my work. When I create something creative, I want the result to belong to me and not to somebody else. I tried that. I was in a nice company and a really cool company actually, but I still didn't like it. So now I'm trying this. I like it a lot better. It's a lot more fun. I have bigger ambitions. So I'm gonna make games myself and then maybe eventually I can, can turn it into my own game studio my own games company but maybe maybe who knows <laughs> the only thing I figured out is that working in a games company is not really what I want to do I want to wear a lot of different hats I want to be involved in a lot of different things I do not want to do just coding or just art no 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 so that's just something you have to figure out do you want a do you want b once again just try it out and see what you like better think about it a little bit and then eventually you'll know what the correct path for you is. And obviously it also depends on how much risk you're willing to take. Are you choosing hmm, kind of risky or really, really, really risky? <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> Let's start with option A. Let's say you want to work in a games company. Actually, there are a lot of different ways you can get into game development and into a games company. There are so many different paths, I can't even name all of them. But what you need to know is that most games companies are looking for very specialized people. They're not looking for somebody who can do everything, who can create graphics and music and programming. They want somebody who can do this. For example, backend programming in Java or something something as specific as, as that. Somebody who can do level design, whatever. Just try to get a specialized education. You probably need to get some further education. You can study game design, you can study computer engineering, you can go somewhere into the IT di direction. Whatever you're interested in, if there's a very specialized topic, 3D modeling, sound design, whatever, just specialize on that and <laughs> then you'll probably find a relatively decent job. Obviously, smaller indie studios work a little differently, but as soon as they have 10 employees or more, they're probably looking for very specialized people. So if you want to get into a games company, learn a skill that is useful for game development. Don't focus on everything, just specialize on one thing. Doing internships and a little bit of networking and knowing people, all of that stuff is helpful. But the number one thing you need to do is get good at something that is useful for game development. 
So now let's get to route B, which is a bit more interesting for me to talk about because that's the route I've chosen. So I want to do my own thing, I want to make my own games, I want to start my own business. I can't tell you how to do that successfully, the only thing I can tell you are my thoughts or my theories on how to do that. One thing that's just immensely helpful for that is having the support of your parents, being able to live in the house of your parents so you don't have to pay rent, especially in the beginning phase, having the support of your parents is just a massive, massive advantage. And I'm so lucky my dad supports my goals and I can just go full YOLO on this whole YouTube game development thing for a while. That are pretty much the best circumstances you can have. So my advice would be simply <laughs> try to be friends with your parents, try to convince them of your goals. Don't tell them I'm gonna be a successful game developer. Tell them I want to try this. And if it doesn't work, I can still do something else because I think that's what most parents like hearing over, okay, I'm fully committed to making video games now, hand over the money so I can do it. <laughs> they want to know that you're an intelligent. Show them you're an intelligent, just show them you know that it's risky, you know that the probability of failure is pretty high. Show them that you have a backup plan, actually have a backup plan, <laughs> and that will hopefully convince them to support you, to support your goals. If they don't, then well, crap. Doesn't matter, you can still do it, but it's gonna be even harder. You need to have some sort of income, maybe a little job or something just to, to su survive and sustain your living because some parents just tell you, no, sorry, we don't support that. All you've gotta say is, okay then, <laughs> I guess I have to do it myself. I'm gonna prove you that I can do it, just prove them wrong. Yeah, but the better option is to be friends with your parents and to get along with them, that's definitely the easier route, but if you can't, if it's just not possible, don't, don't, please don't let that hold you back. If you're really good at sales, you can also try to convince uh, some external investors, but I think if you're just coming out of school and want to become a game developer, that's gonna be pretty hard. So your parents are pretty much your best bet. Try to make your parents your investors. If you can't, Sorry. <laughs> it's unfair that not everybody has the same opportunity and also some parents are just selfish. They think, oh my parents would have never done that for me so my kids don't get it either. I really think that's how some parents work. It's completely bizarre to me. If it's not possible, it's not a possible. Now that we got the finances down, what else should you do when you try to make your own games, when you try to start your own games company? First of all, be really self-aware of the fact that the chance of failure is really high, especially if you don't do anything. You really need to take action, you need to work a lot, you need to put a lot of energy and thought into this, and even then the chance of you succeeding is not all that high. So you should have some sort of a backup plan. I don't really have a good backup plan now that I think about it, but... Uh... <laughs> Having a backup plan is definitely helpful. Just be aware of the fact that it's super risky and that you need to put a lot of energy into it. Step number two, use freaking social media. <laughs> I made a video about this and if you don't want to take my word for it, check out Gary Vaynerchuk. He's an amazing business dude who talks about social media a lot. And really there's no reason not to go crazy about social media because it's free marketing, it's free attention and attention is everything. You can't sell your games without having attention. And one of the biggest things you need to do on your social media is actually providing value. Give away all of your best advice for free. I don't want to dive too deep into that. I made a complete video about social media, check that out if you want. But Use social media. It's an amazing opportunity that we have nowadays. You can reach so many people if you just put in enough work and enough patience. Social media, guys, use it. Next piece of advice, if you want to start your own games company, if you want to make games yourself, put yourself out there, communicate, show other people your game. Don't just sit in your room the entire day coding on your game and then when you release it, wait until something magical happens. That's just not how it works. <laughs> put yourself out there and put your game out there as early as possible and as often as possible. Don't underestimate the marketing part. You can't just make a game and then it magically works. Yeah, sure, in some cases, it does, but it's already risky enough. Let's try to keep the risk low and keeping the risk low means getting as much feedback as possible and putting yourself out there. <sighs> yeah, obviously there's a lot more to creating a business around game development, to make your own video games. Let's not dive too deep into that rabbit hole because pretty much this entire YouTube channel is about that anyway. So if you're interested in how that journey continues, you can just subscribe. Let's talk about one more issue and that is you want to get started with game development now. 
now and school is holding you back it's eating up all your time school is just that evil monster that stops you from making games or at least that's the impression I got from your comment. And I, I kind of get it, okay? School is super annoying and 80% of what you learn in school is probably completely useless. You forget all of that stuff. I had French lessons for four years, five years, and all I can say is Bonjour, je suis Jonas. That's pretty much it. <laughs> the rest is completely gone. It's annoying, it costs a lot of time. I know all of that, okay? I've gone through that pain as well, <laughs> through that suffering. But guess what? It didn't stop me from making games. I still made a ton of games during school. I still made a ton of games while I was a student. I still had enough spare time. You can totally do both. And actually just stop whining, okay? Because you can't change it and it doesn't... It doesn't really help you to be upset about things that you can't change. I think I wouldn't quit school just to do game development. And in fact, I haven't done that, even though I hated school. Just go through with it, be a little patient. That opens you up so many more doors later on. That stupid piece of paper you get at the end gives you a lot of opportunities. And it all comes back to having a plan B. If game development doesn't work, then having that piece of paper suddenly is kind of nice, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Don't quit school to go into game development. I wouldn't do it. You're still young, you still have a lot of time to live. If you do a little bit of time management, you can still do everything, school, free time, and game development. So stop whining, okay? If you are already in game development, if you are already a game developer, leave your tips in the comments as well, so the others can learn from your experience as well. That would be very nice. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, please. I will answer absolutely everything. Making this transition from school to game development, from being a student to a game developer, isn't that easy, I know, but there are a lot of different ways to do it. Don't stress out about it too much. You're still young, you can still make mistakes. Don't worry too much. So I hope you learned something here. Thank you very much for watching. Have an amazing day. Make the world your playground and see you in the next one. Peace.